This is Twit. Lots of folks are familiar uh, with TSMC. That's the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. That's the long, spelled out version. A lot of people know about TSMC. They make chips for Apple. They make chips for Qualcomm. They make chips for a lot of different companies, a lot of different tech companies. And for a long time, they have been the top of the charts uh, with their smallest five nanometer uh, process. And so because of that, companies go to them for that five nanometer process. And I'll explain a little bit about the, the way that these chips work. So the size of the, the 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 size of the process the smaller it is the more efficient the chip is uh, and potentially the more uh, performance you can get with that efficiency in mind so you want smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller processes because with that you get better speeds better performance and uh, all over just ev- everything pretty much gets better and so there are uh, different ways of making these chips that will sometimes result in larger than five nanometers. Uh, but TSMC has kind of held held the um, the charge at five nanometer, and uh, that is why Apple and other companies make use of them. However, on June 30th at 2.21 a.m. Pacific, that's our time here in uh, Petaluma, in sunny Petaluma, Samsung Electronics announced that they have begun mass production of three nanometer chips. Yes, from five to three. Three nanometer chips. They are hoping to uh, beat TSMC, and they have beat TSMC to being first to doing this globally. And uh, according to the Reuters report, the newly developed first gen three nanometer process can reduce power consumption by up to 45%, going from uh, five to three, improve performance by 23%, and reduce area, of course, by 16%. So what does that mean, reduce area? Well, obviously, (laughs) the process is smaller, so you get a smaller one, so you're able to fit more uh, in there. Um, They haven't talked about who they're going to be working with on this, but uh, as the Reuters report points out, it's likely that Samsung itself will make use of this three nanometer process and other companies um, in China will make use of these chips for the devices that they, for the, the electronics that they make that then other companies buy to put inside of the electronics that they make. So it's kind of at the very base of the, the setup here. And What's wild about this is that, again, as the Reuters report shows, TSMC controls just about 54%, so more than half of the global market for the uh, production of chips, and are used, again, by these huge companies. So this, because they are used by these huge companies, because they control so much of it, they are can put all of their focus on making these uh, these these labs, these uh, construction facilities, where or rather these chip facilities, where they can create these smaller and smaller and smaller chips. Samsung, on the other hand, focuses on a hundred billion things. I mean, from um, washing machines and uh, I don't know. F- tower fans all the way down to uh, smartphones and uh, watches. And so for them to also be working on a chip is kind of impressive. Uh, Samsung does take the second place in that global market for uh, production of chips at 16.3. Remember that number before is 54, 54 to 16.3. And of course, this is uh, according to a um, data provider called TrendForce. So take all of that with a grain of salt. But it's just wild that that much, um, there's that much difference between the two and that Samsung was able to beat uh, TSMC to this three nanometer chip. Uh, according to that report, the uh, Samsung put $132 billion uh, of an investment. And this was just last year, $132 billion they invested last year to try and overtake TSMC. They want to be the world's top chip maker by 2030, Samsung does. 
So, you know, I was reading through this report going, wow, looking at the photos, uh, there's like this all yellow room where the uh, engineers are holding um, wafers, which of course are kind of the, uh, the, the before the, the chips are themselves created, uh, it starts there at the, at the wafer size. And as I'm reading through, then I found <laughs> an interesting line from Reuters. It says, while Samsung is the first to production with three nanometer chip production, TSMC is planning two nanometer volume production in 2025. So Samsung may have stepped forward to get that three out there, but it may be because TSMC is currently working on two nanometer chips, which they hope to release in the next three years. So this is a fun battle between these two companies that are first and second in line uh, with quite a, a space between them. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see. Now, I want to uh, read some quotes that are uh, interesting here. It says, so of course, uh, TSMC has the lead on certain kinds of chips. Samsung still maintains the lead on other kinds of chips. And here's what it is. Samsung is the market leader in memory chips, but it has been out, but it had been outspent by front runner TSMC in the more diverse foundry business, making it difficult to compete. Non-memory is different because there's too much variety. There are only two kinds of memory chips, DRAM and NAND flash. You can concentrate on one thing, raise efficiency and make a lot of it, but you can't do do that with a thousand different non-memory chips. And so that is kind of the argument there is that, uh, hey, Samsung claims that spot as being the best memory chips you can get with that DRAM and NAND flash because you can focus so much of your attention there. But when it comes to non-memory chips, that is where uh, TSMC is shining, or at least was up until this point. So this is this is a fascinating thing um, with Samsung Electronics really doing its best to step in and uh, beat TS excuse me beat TSMC at its own game. Um, I know I personally will be watching very closely uh, uh, to see how these companies kind of continue to compete and uh, how the import. Im performance is what I'm trying to say. Performance improvements uh, take place over time. That should be a really fascinating thing to watch. And hey, what's the most important to me as the consumer is that there's some competition here because competition breeds better, uh, faster, more performant technologies. So when you've got that compete, even even when they, they look and they say, wow, it's 54% uh, versus our 16.3%, we got to try to take out the big guy. And uh, they seem to be doing their best to make that happen. So um, I say congratulations to Samsung for uh, their new three nanometer chip. And uh, I'll be interested to see. I also wonder too, going back to that yellow, <laughs> that yellow photo of Samsung Electronics Labs, uh, maybe somebody in the chat knows if maybe there's something f about yellow that is good uh, for production. And if not, then it makes me wonder if uh, TSMC has their own color, like everybody there wears a slate blue color or something like that. And uh, so the, the labs kind of compete and they've all got their own little get ups that go with them. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I can't imagine working in that environment every day uh, where everything you look around and it's just yellow for days. Um, anywho. Really interesting stuff, uh, and we shall see how, as I said, TSMC responds going forward. Scooter X has provided me with an answer for the yellow. <clears throat> and I quote from Scooter X, who is quoting from something else. The process ensures that chips aren't contaminated by tiny particles. Some areas of the factory are even flooded in yellow light to avoid risking light contamination. So... Uh, the reason it is yellow is if you want to avoid white light interfering with the patterns being made on these wafers, we are in the main photolithography bay. Photolithography is where the pattern is made, oh, on the silicon wafer. It is literally the most important step that we do over and over again to build a semiconductor chip. Okay, so if you're doing photolithography, um, that will help keep the white light from interfering with the 
that pattern that is being put onto the, the wafers. Very cool. Thank you, Scooter X. Um, that way, everything remains uncontaminated. So, sounds like TSMC is also yellow inside. Uh, and now I understand, and I will be painting all of my house in yellow to stop white light interference. I'm curious about the physics there, because why wouldn't you just paint everything black? Because that would absorb light. Anyway.